It looks like the gates of hell itself. Oh my god, mm. but that ramen. <laughs> Why did, why did he want you to stop coming? Good morning, everyone, and welcome to Journey Across Japan, non stop north. It's 7 a.m. in the morning, and we're in the town of Kitakata, the ramen capital of Japan. So it's a good thing I'm feeling rather peckish. So I love Kitakata. I've only been here one time many years ago. Had a bowl of ramen, loved it, always wanted to come back. So when we arrived here in Fukushima yesterday in the town of Aizuwakamatsu, a few miles down the road, I knew I had to start today's episode right here and get a bowl of morning ramen. Like the locals here love ramen so much. Not only do they have a ramen shrine, but people get up at seven, eight o'clock in the morning and eat the ramen, which we're gonna do in just a minute. And if you come inside, here's the real surprise. A proper full blown Tory gate with Natsuki. Morning! Yay! Hey. Hey. Hey, good to see you. <laughs> Are you ready? Asaramen. Okay. How'd you make it? Asaramen. I, uh, I've never been. Right, well, yeah, I know. Like The idea of having ramen for breakfast is like really weird. But anyway, look at this. Wow, wow. pretty good. Yeah. An wow. entire ramen tribe. How cool is that? In Shintoism, Japanese religion, they can find a god in everything, right? Everything has its own kind of spirit. And here in Kitakata, the spirit is, of course, the god of ramen. So god of ramen. God of ramen. Kitakata city is made of ramen. It is. Yeah. It absolutely is. But of course, we kick things off with challenge of the day. You guys have sent in 7,000 challenges. Let's do it! Ian, the driver and creator, has picked one. And now, sure. it's on the floor. And it is something good, I hope. Yesterday, we had to find a famous person. We kind of failed. We found a famous cat. And today's challenge is... Oh no. Eat at least three, three different types of ramen in one day from Akshay. That's pretty bad. That's oh a lot of ramen. Oh my god. It's the food coma special. We are stomach ah. full ramen. Maybe, maybe too much ramen. No diet. Yeah, that's out the window. Come on then, let's go have some morning ramen. Yeah. Kitakata is often referred to as one of the three ramen capitals of Japan. While Hakata in Fukuoka is famous for its tonkotsu pork broth, and Hokkaido is known for its miso based broth. Kitakata is soy based, which just so happens to be my personal favourite, perhaps given it was the ramen I most commonly ate when I first moved to Japan and lived just a few hours north of Kitakata. The characteristics of Kitakata don't stop with soy sauce broth though. The noodles are iconic for their firm, flat, curly shape, while the toppings feature generous helpings of melt in your mouth, chashu braised pork, green onions, and bamboo shoots, though eggs are actually less common here. Surprisingly, despite Kitakata's obsession for ramen today, with their shops, ramen shrine, and even their ramen flavoured ice cream, not so sure about that one. Interesting. Before the 20th century, there were in fact no ramen shops in the city. Then in the 1920s, a Chinese chef named Ban Kinse arrived in the town selling chukasoba, literally Chinese noodles, at a yatai food stall, eventually opening a shop called Gennaiken, and along the way teaching his recipe to the grateful locals who soon embraced the dish with their own distinct variations. It soon became so popular that the locals embraced the custom of asara, literally morning ramen, an idea that most Japanese actually find rather bizarre, almost like eating a lasagna or burgers for breakfast. But we start our day at restaurant Ippe, where at just 7am in the morning, it's already bustling with customers who are finishing up all night factory shifts or looking for some much needed energy, having cleared the first snows of winter from their driveways. チャーシューの炊き込みもまあ丁寧にして、これが評価されて、まあ常連さんもついてきているのかなと思います。おすすめはセアブラを使った人質とラーメンになります。あ、セアブラーマン。モーニングラーマン。This is it's kind of like a local dialect, but you can see it's very visual, right? All the fat and the pork in the dish. It's quite a thick looking broth. Like a snow. It is like snow. Beautiful. And actually, if you look outside, oh. it's snowing outside. pretty heavily as well. Inside. <laughs> outside <laughs> snow, inside <laughs> snow, <laughs> in the ramen bowl. Hey, Tadakimasu. Tadakimasu, this looks so good. I've had ramen, ramen. ages. A morning ramen. And now we're going to eat all the ramen today. So this is quite the transition. Oh, sweetie. Eat it too. 
eat even in the morning. Some good English there. Quite a fluent sentence. Good job, good Natsuki. Thing. Natsuki eats a little bit of ramen and becomes fluent in English. <laughs> While all the restaurants that get together have their own subtle take on ramen, for the most part, there are some similarities. For example, Kitakata is famous for its curly noodles, and they're quite good at absorbing the kind of flavours of the soup. Also, it's a soy sauce based broth. Chashu meat softy. Soft, it sort of crumbles and falls apart. So you might be wondering why they have morning ramen, right? It is quite rare in Japan. Fukushima and Kitakata is famous for it. One reason they have it here is there's a lot of factories in North Fukushima oh. and the Kitakata area. So the factory workers can get some healthy, delicious, very energetic nourishment before they start their long day at the factory. And it's pretty damn busy here for what, eight o'clock in the morning. Clearly Asa ramen is quite popular. Mm. Uh, sound quiet. Mm. Quite sound. I can't slurp. Ten years in Japan, and I can't yeah. slurp like the locals do. Noodle. All noodle slurp. Show us how it's done. Japanese slurp. Oh. It's actually slurping mm. is cleaner. You're, you're bringing up the soup with it. It's nice and clean. But I just can't do it. I feel like I'm going to choke or something. Slurp. Slurp. Oh, slurp. 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 Ryotaro always bullies me. Ryotaro's like, oh man, you can't slurp your noodles. Oh, you can't slurp your noodles. <laughs> Who can slurp the best, Ryotaro or Natsuki? <laughs> Ryotaro is like a fucking dice. <laughs> <laughs> He's slurper, slurper. Well, restaurant Ippe certainly set the bar pretty damn high. And now we face the arduous task of picking our second restaurant in the city with endless ramen possibilities to choose from. Over to you, Natsuki. Oh man, that was good, but I'm absolutely stuffed. In a normal, real-life situation, that would be where you end it. No more ramen for the next week or so. And yet, we've got to have it again and again. But one good thing is, as we were leaving the shop, I found this ramen kitakata guide map. So, Ooh. take a look, Natsuki. See what you can find. Pick out the next one. Oh, like a treasure. Mm. Oh, this is good. Uh, Asian Shokodo. Hello, Sita. Yeah, so, yeah, it's got a singular onion. So good. Do we have to eat more? Onion? <laughs> oh. Ah. Oh. Ah. Oh. Ah. For our next restaurant, we head to Asian Shokodo, famous for their Jiro style ramen, packed full of garlic and a mountain of bean sprouts, popular with university and high school students looking for a hearty meal. But if I'm going to survive today, we can't go eating a mountain of ramen. So I think I'll go with something a lot lighter. Natsuki, well, I've ordered something a little bit more adventurous for our dear friend Natsuki. <laughs> スープは北方のお酒も作ってる水とあと豚とあと地元の野菜とそれも長時間炊いてるんでやる気とラーメンに対する熱量でやっぱりクオリティも変わってきますしお客さんに提供するものなんでしっかりきれいに美味しいものを
Look, it's like blood bread. I only had the tiniest amount. I think I did eat a bit of the chilli though. Oh, this voice. I think the cameraman should try some. I get happy. Oh, quick, quick, quick. Oh. <laughs> <What>? <laughs> you chose the ramen shop, I choose the food. Fuck. Do you like journey across Japan? Sometimes <laughs> good, but always bad. <laughs> British shit man. <laughs> right? That's a good t-shirt there, British shit man. Yeah, yeah. Stop beating. <laughs> Poor cut. Don't Why did you stop, stop coming? <laughs> well, that was delicious and dare I say fun. Did you enjoy that, Dusky? Oh, good ramen. Oh, more than it. Well, we've got one more ramen oh, left. No. My <laughs> headache. Look at that. Oh, that shit. One more to go. Uh, one whoa, more to whoa. go. After almost killing Natsuki with our previous dish, I've taken matters into my own hands and chosen a ramen with something a little bit lighter. Okay, hey, Natsuki. Yeah. The last ramen shop of the oh, trip. Awesome. How's your stomach? Yeah. Come on, man. <laughs> this one is a tori soba, literally like chicken, chicken. ramen. Yeah. Or oh, maybe Japanese style. Yeah. Oh. We haven't had this one today, so let's give it a whirl. Last ramen of the day. Mm. Go, go, go. And so we head to Tori Soba Nikomiwa, famous for Tori Soba, characterized by a lighter chicken broth and perfect after you've destroyed your taste buds with red hot chili pepper ramen. This is this. This is this. That's no better way to explain perfection. That looks really good. So you might be thinking, well, where's the chicken, right? But actually, this is pork and the broth itself has chicken in it, right? Oh, mysterious. Mysterious. Yeah. It's so photogenic, I almost don't want to eat it. Just the smell of the chicken broth, the pork, the soy sauce. Oh, it's so rich. That's bloody good. What a wonderful end to the day. This is a really quaint little ramen <laughs> shop, actually. It's kind of hidden down an alleyway here in the middle of Kitakata. If you blink, you'd sort of miss it while walking down the street, but actually, it's really kind of cozy. And with the cold, snowy weather today, yeah, this is just a ticket. Kitakata Chashu. Beautifully braised pork. Great. That's, that's so damn juicy. Oh, delicious. We've eaten a worrying amount of ramen today, right? Oh, but she. Not only do I think this is my favourite one. Sweet times. But I'm quite happy eating three ramens in, in one day. How are you feeling though after your red hot chilli pepper ramen, Aski? Oh, my stomach. Oh. Bami. Burning stomach. Uh, three times toilet. <laughs> But oh no! Three times ramen. Hey! Same. <laughs> oh, I don't. I don't want to know, man. Which is your favourite ramen today? This is the Kitakata style. The Kitakata style. Kitakata has done such a cool job embracing the whole cult of ramen. From the temple and the shrine, the map of all the town, all the ramen shops, like, they've done such a good job embracing it all. But this is kind of like the quintessential Kitakata ramen, the way it looks right, with all the nikusoba. Oh, it looks so good. All the chashi ramen oh. on top. On the original journey across Japan, you can watch me on the bicycle get fitter in real time, yeah. right? On this series, you can watch me in real time get fatter as ramen. I travel the country in a car, oh. eating relentless amounts of ramen. Oh. You can watch me bulk up like a chicken or something. My God. Mm. I said at the start of today, I'll be able to do that by the end. I can't, watch. Mm. Mm. Good, sounds good. I did it. One more, one more. One oh, more sounds. More sounds. <laughs> All right. Oh, so. Final. A little side project for the rest of Jenny of Japan, learning how to slur. Mm. I might not be able to slur, but notice how we're sitting yeah. on the correct side now. Good position. Yeah, at yeah, last, yeah. we've nailed it. And it took me 10 years to work out how to sit on this side of the camera. Oh. <laughs> My god, Natsuki, you polished that off fast. Look at oh. that. 
It's gone. A little dosha. This was exceptional. And finally, a challenge we can get behind on Journey Across mm. Japan. If only it was always this good. Eat ramen. Eat all the ramen. High calories. It certainly was the most calorific episode we've ever shot. But thank you so much for joining Journey Across Japan, Natsuki. Thank you. What was your favourite memory of the last three days? Uh... Tochigi, Tochigi, Riverside, by the river, Good Onsen, Kinagawa Hot Spring. Yeah, if you missed Natsuki splashing around in the hot spring, go back and check that out. But now I've got to go to Koriyama, two hours east of here, long drive ahead. Oh, uh, be careful. Thank you, Natsuki. And uh, well, Sakata, Yamagata, oh. it's not too far from here. You can find your own way home. It's like a train or a bus or something. So. Well, thank you for the ramen. Good man. Oh, 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 oh I'll see you again soon. No, 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 no. Next it's time. a jog. No, no, no. Fuck. See you later, mate. Oh my god. Oh, so fucking British, sir. <laughs> yeah, bye, Natsuki. See you next time. My god, what a day it's been. But thank you guys for joining us on the third episode of Journey Across Japan Non Stop North. Tomorrow we head to the former Fukushima exclusion zone to see what's going on there since the recovery over the last decade. I haven't been to the Fukushima exclusion zone since 2019, so there's a lot of changes going on there. I think it'll be really interesting to see and hear what's happening. Thanks for joining us. Uh, I'm gonna go and drive for an hour or two and hopefully he'll find his way back home and not be too ill after the amount of ramen we've had in the last 24 hours, my God. So it was at 2.46 the earthquake took place and 3.33 when the tsunami hit. You get a real sense of the power of the tsunami coming through the school, walking through the classrooms, seeing the ceiling collapse, kind of taps and things bent, like metal just bent completely. Thank God everyone got out okay.